Welcome back to Metaphor Math, and we're on to 3B in our Intro to Analysis by Rosenlicht uh, series. And on this one, we're showing another set of polarity here. And we're going to do it just like we did in the past videos, where we're going to show that the left-hand side is a subset of the right-hand side, and the set on the right-hand side is a subset of the set on the left-hand side. So first, we're going to show that... Oh, and I, f I should mention that this... Um, I drew this uh, picture here just to kind of motivate us on our journey in uh, proving this statement. So um, our first step here is to show that A intersect B between C is a subset of A intersect B union A intersect C. So if we can show that any general arbitrarily chosen element in this left-hand side is it also must also be, it must also be in this right-hand side. Um, then we've shown that every possible element in A intersect B union C is in this right-hand side, A intersect B union A intersect C. And thus we showed that this set, A intersect B union C, is contained in A intersect B union A intersect C. So let's do that. Let's just choose, let's just say, let's just choose an arbitrary element in A intersect B union C. So we're going to say, let X be in A union B intersect C. So I'm just saying here, hey, I'm choosing some random element in here, not and not a random element, a general element, a general element so much so that we that this general element is indicative of all elements, uh, or not indicative, but rather it represents all possible elements in A intersect B union C. So um, let X be in A intersect B union C, then that implies that X is in A, and X is in B union C. So we know here, um, and this is by definition of the intersect, uh, set intersection, so we know here that X is always, it's always the case that X is going to be in A, because it must always be in A, because if it weren't, then it wouldn't be both in A and B union C, by definition of set intersection. So it's always the case that X is in A, but we could either have that X is in B, or we could have that X is in C, or both. Remember in mathematics, the word or, um, it's implied that, or the or both is implied in the word or when we're in the context of mathematics in most cases. Um, so, in the first case, in, the, in one case rather, one case, x is in b, and in the other, other case, X is in C. So if X is in B, in, in this first case, if X is in B, then that implies that that implies that X is in A and X is in B. Because X must always be in A. And this implies, by definition of set intersection, that X is in A intersect B. And um, in the same way here, if X is in C, then that means since X must also always be in A, X is in A, and X is in B. And again, the reason why X is always in A is because X is in A intersect B union C. Um, so X is in A and X is in B, which implies that X is in, oh, excuse me, not X is in, X is in C here, Oopsie. which implies that X is in A intersect C. And you might be saying, well, what about the case where X is both in B and C? Well, I could say for that case that it falls into both of these cases, and all of these implications hold when it falls into both of these cases. So if I say X is both in B and C, then it must be the case that X is in B, and that means that X is in A and in B, which implies that X is in A intersect B. So um, since both of these cases are possibilities, since both of these cases could hold, I can say well, case, either case 1 is true or case 2 is true. In other words, I could say that x is in A intersect B for case 1, or x is in A intersect C for case 2. And by the definition of set union, again, or both, remember, this word or, it could be in both B and C. Um, so by the definition of set union, this implies that x is in A intersect B, union A intersect C. And look at this. We've shown 
that this arbitrarily chosen x and a intersect b union c must also be an a intersect b union a intersect c. So we're done with this first part here where we showed that the left-hand side is a subset of the right-hand side. And so now all we have to do, now all we have to do, change colors here, is to show that a intersect b union a intersect c is a union here is a subset of or is contained in a intersect b union c and again we're just going to choose an arbitrary general element a representative element in a intersect b union a intersect c um, so we're going to do that by saying let x be an a intersect b union a intersect c and what does that mean well by definition of set union x is in a intersect b or x is in a intersect c so let's take the first case here let's say suppose suppose x is in a intersect b well that means that x is in a and x is in b by definition of set intersection and if x is in b i'm going to remind us of a certain property here i'm going to change colors here real quick and just remind you that remember the set x is a subset of x union y because the set x union y is everything in x or everything in y or both so it's both everything in x and y and or, or i should say it's every element in X or every element in Y or both. So if we were to draw this real quick, let that the red is X, the yellow is Y, and so the union would be um, both both of these circles, both of these circles and everything that intersects in these circles. So back to our problem here. Back to our problem. If X is in A and X is in B. And that means that x is in A and x is in B union C, which implies that x is in A intersect B union C um, so by definition of set intersection. And I could do the same thing for the other, for the other case. Suppose, suppose x is in A intersect C then that implies that x is in A and x is in C, which implies that x is in A and, sorry, x is in um, B union C, like I did before, because if x is in C, then it must be that x is in C union B, or other, which is the same as B union C. And this implies some more room here and this implies that x is in a this implies that x is in a intersect b union c so in both cases whether or not whether x is in a intersect b or x is a intersect c in both cases x i'm going to say here in both cases cases x is in a intersect b union c and oh, remember, if I were to say that x, if x is in A intersect B and x is in A intersect C, because the word both or implies that x could be in both of these sets, then remember, we can just fall into both of these cases and all of the implications in that one case will hold. So again, in both, in both cases, x is in A intersect B union C. And um, so that means that if x is in A intersect B union A intersect C, then x must be an a intersect b union c. Um, and we're done with the showing that the right is a subset of the left. And since we showed, let me zoom out here uh, just to view. Since we showed both ways, we showed that uh, a intersect b union c is a subset and a intersect b union a intersect c are subsets of each other. We've shown that they're equal, the two sets are equal to each other. And we're done.